Hi everyone, um, today we are going to learn how to create Google Fusion Tables. Um, a lot of you must have seen Google Fusion Tables in mainstream media. New York Times has a lot of those, uh, Guardian has a lot of those. This is an example from the New York Times. Um, this is a Google Fusion Table on the destruction caused by Hurricane Sandy. Um, let's see. <clears throat> This is an interactive map, of course, and um, so the red shows destroyed areas, uh, the yellow shows a uh, uh, major destruction, and the blue shows a flood zone. Um, we won't be doing anything complex today. We're just going to get a head start on how to use Google Fusion Tables, and we will create a simple map. I figured we could um, plot uh, school attendance in New York City and see what percent of students have actually been attending schools uh, by different school districts. Um, um, so to do that, we are going to need uh, two maps, sorry, two data sets. One is going to be uh, a data set with the geometry of uh, the location we are trying to plot. So for example, when um, uh, New York Times uh, did this, they must have plotted this by the flood zone. Uh, so everything in blue over here, this was probably plotted by a KML. That's just a guess, of course, but I am guessing that's how it was done. Um, we're, we will have to find the KML for um, all New York City school districts and we will need data on uh, school attendance in New York City, um, so the actual numbers. <clears throat> so let's start by trying to find data on school attendance in New York City. Um, so I've actually kind of already done it, but I am just going to show you how I did it anyway. Um, just simply typed on Google school. attendance in New York City by school district. Um, so um, if you go here, you will see that the data here is only for today. So download today's data. But what I want to plot is not today's school attendance, but I want to see this, uh, see what the average school attendance in school districts has been like over a, a period of time. Um, so this data doesn't quite work for me. Um, I'm actually going to go back. I'm going to try and find uh, this data in the New York City Open Data website, which has all kinds of data um, available. Uh, that's a really good website to keep in mind, too. New York Open Data. All right. So once I get here, I am actually going to see, as we can see, there are all kinds of data sets available here. I'm going to click on education because I want the school attendance data. Um, and then I am going to, <coughs> here we go, school attendance and enrollment statistics by district, uh, which is kind of what we want. I mean, we could plot um, plot anything by boroughs, districts, uh, police precincts, uh, but for school attendance it, it makes absolute sense to plot, plot it by school district. So here we go, I'm going to click on this um, and okay, look at this first. Uh, this actually looks really great. It's clean. Um, there isn't an overload of data. Uh, this is exactly what I want. The per average percent of students who um, uh, attended school in 2010 and 2011. I am guessing they don't have a more, um, um, what do you call that? Um, um, I am guessing they don't have more current data. Um, so I am also going to turn my phone off. Um, so we're going to go with this and this also works very well for this exercise on how to use Google Fusion Tables. So I will export this <coughs> data, export, 
Um, I want to download this as a CSV. A CSV is a comma separated value. Um, I, w I also want to make sure that everything looks right. Um, everything looks great, but I want to make sure I don't have the percent signs here because those can really complicate things once you start uploading data online, uh, especially on Google Fusion Tables. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the commas. I mean percents. Um, here it is. I did that. Uh, all the percent signs are now gone. We have um, numbers here, 89, 63, 83.21. Um, <clears throat> now... This looks about right. Uh, now, uh, what I need to do is I need to save this file. Uh, save as uh, New York City School Attendance and Enrollment stat uh, Statistics by District. This is really important to name things correctly because things can get easily lost once you start doing um, more things. Um, so I actually created a folder called New York City School Attendance Fusion Tables and that is under it so now it will be easy for me to organize and uh, group my work. So that's saved. Uh, replace, yes. Um, continue. And I'm going to close this. Uh, save. Alright, let's continue. Um, what I now need, now I have a a set, a data set that gives me the uh, average attendance in each uh, school district. Now what I need is a KML. A KML is basically, like I said, um, a region um, that is uh, defined by a series of coordinates. So for example, uh, this would be uh, at least a few thousand different coordinates that define this, um, this strip of land. Uh, so we're trying to find the uh, KML for school districts. And to do that, I am simply going to go and Google New York City School District KML. Um, <coughs> um, so this is a site by Columbia. Yay! Um, there we go, the New York City School Districts. I'm going to view the table just to make sure everything looks right. Um, everything does look great. You can see the little boundaries around this red uh, blob. Um, and it also gives me the option to download the KML, which is what I'm going to do. All right. Um, but as, it, as this is getting downloaded, I also want to make sure that this data matches up to the other data we have. Uh, I'm going to look at the table view for this. Um, and here it is. We do have a column that says school district. And um, in our other data, which is over here, um, we also have a column called school district. So this is school district. But if you notice, uh, there are differences here. While they mean the same thing, this is called District 1, District 2, whereas these, the other one, simply just is numbers. Um, so what we need to do is we need to change one of them so that they look exactly alike. That is the only way Google's going to recognize that these two, to, to these two uh, data sets need to merge, which is what we're going to do later to create this, uh, to plot um, uh, the enrollment uh, uh, per percent of students who attend uh, um, New York City s schools. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and change the district. Uh, I'm going to de delete district completely from this thing so it looks exactly like our other data. Um, now that I've done that, I'm simply going to save this again. File, save, continue, um, and I'm going to close it. Continue. Now this column matches the column I just changed. Um, what we what we need to do now is um, go to our Gmail and then access our Google Drive. So I've already downloaded this file. I well saved it in the same folder uh, where I had my uh, data on school attendance. And now I am going to go back to my Gmail and Google Drive, so where we create fusion tables. So gmail.com drive uh, 
create fusion table. So this is what you want to click on. <clears throat> and now, if you remember, we have the two files in the same folder, so this makes it really easy for us. We're going to upload both of those. Desktop. New York City Schools, open. Um, New York City School Attendance, open. Um, so what CSV, comma separated value, our separator character is a CSV, that's how we downloaded the data. And just click on that, go next. Um, so if you look at it, this looks really clear. New York City School Districts, percent enrollment, and the average enrollment. Um, so, I'm going to go to next. Uh, this is really important. It's really, really, really important to attribute data uh, to sources where you got them from. Just because it's very, it's also, it's, um, it's a journalism rule. Uh, you do source your, um, you, when you take something from somebody, you give them credit for it. Also, it makes it very easy for you to keep, in tr keep track of everything you've done with this data, where it comes from. Um, in case you want to look at it again, you can go back and find it. Um, it's just, uh, you have to do this. Um, so I am going to go, and this is where I got my data from. Um, data, New York City open data. So if you go back here, New York City, I'm going to attribute my data to New York City open data. I'm going to paste the page link here and finish. Okay, this looks great. Um, so now what I need is um, I need a map to place all this information on where, which means I need to go back. Um, <clears throat> I need a new table for that other file we needed to upload, the New York City School District's KML. Again, next. All right, so here is the uploaded version of the KML that we downloaded from the Columbia site. Um, I'm going to click Next again and do the same thing I did with my last uh, data set. Attribute this to DM Associates, Columbia Journalism School. Take that link from here. Come and finish. Here we go. Now we see the KML. Google's already recognized this as a shapefile, which is a KML. Uh, now I'm going to merge this with our other table. So merge, select a table, uh, school attendance and enrollment statistics by district. So that is what we're looking for, which is next um, and this is what's important this is the reason why we changed um, our column to match the other one so we want to match the New York City school districts column um, to the school district column on the KML file so next um, do we need the description maybe not the geometry vertex count I don't know what that is probably not School district, yes, I'm not going to use that, I'm not going to use that, maybe, I'm just going to keep all of that right now. So I'm going to merge this. So our merge table is created, let's see what it looks like. There you go, that's merged with the school district numbers and the map looks like this. So right now we can't see much of what's going on. To get things to change, to see what has a high percent of um, <clears throat> attendance rate and what doesn't, we will have to change the map styles. Um, so I'm going to go change map styles. So that is a polygon. Once again, that's a polygon. Those are different shapes within the map. So I'm going to go change map styles, fill color on polygons. And I probably want to use a bucket right now. I might have to meet you in the next video. Bye.